So for our next interview, it's a real honour to introduce one of the most influential women in the world in relation to positive, constructive change for the benefit of humanity, Zaina Salbi. She's the founder of Daughters for Earth and Women for Women in International, an organisation helping women survivors of conflict. She's also best-selling author of Between Two Worlds, and her latest book is titled Freedom is an Inside Job. Please welcome Miss Salby to Climate Action Live 2023. Zaina, could you tell us about yourself and your journey to this point? Well, so be good being with you all here. Thank you very much for having me. Um, listen, I grew up in Iraq, in Baghdad, Iraq. And from a very young age, I realized that the world sees uh, everything. In my case, it was war and peace from a male perspective. Um, and women's perspective are rarely seen. So when I grew up in a war in, in the Iran Iraq war and I could see that the, the TV stations were only talking about the tanks and the soldiers, but no one was talking about women who were, um, running the show, keeping life going, um, in schools and hospitals and in the streets, everything. And that has become my journey in life journey as I came to America as a founded Women for Women International and worked with women survivors in wars. And lately, as I work with women in climate, I, I'm constantly surprised that our narrative of how we understand the world and all the issues that we are dealing with, economic, cultural, political, um, everything, we see it from predominantly a male perspective. I'm not saying this is right or wrong. I'm saying it's not a balanced picture. It is not a full and complete picture. And that unless we understand all these same issues as women see it and experience it and have the solutions for them, we cannot create lasting peace and lasting prosperity and lasting good economic uh, solutions for climate uh, change and for earth friendly uh, policies unless we include women in all these decisions we are not um uh, we're not able to actually hold on to the solutions and the future that we want to create thank you zaina incredible it's always amazing just being with you and listening to you your knowledge is just totally inspiring thank you once again for always being there for peace one day and letting us tell your amazing story thank you zaina so the next thing i'd like to ask you you can tell I'm a huge fan. But the next thing I'd like to ask you is where do you think we are in relation to protecting our planet? I really appreciate this question, Jeremy. Um, here's the thing. As I told you, I am from originally from Iraq, although I do live in America and I worked and traveled around the world. And the way I see it is that we are it's almost that there are two narratives for humanity. It is, you know, they are, you know, the small bubble that is talking about climate change and that we actually need to lead to actions. Maybe it's not small, I don't know, but it is uh, a certain uh, crowd, you know, predominantly in Western Europe and America, but not necessarily. Uh, indigenous people, a lot. But there's another world, you know, that is the narrative so that there's a crisis that we need to do something about it is either non-existence or denied or people are confused and saying we don't understand what's going on and i'm not saying this is conservative liberal issues at all i actually beyond that is is about the narratives in different countries and different cultures and in how the climate uh, world is communicating with other cultures and other narratives in a way that brings everyone on board as a collective humanity because what's at stake is our own humanity earth is going to be ultimately okay um so we are living in a divided world in my opinion even with the most uh, existential crisis that is facing us and i think the issue is not only to actually explain what's happening in a narrative that could be understood in different cultures and in different from a human perspective we need to go out of our way to bring everyone on board and we need to go out of our way not to to change the narrative from lecturing and making it fear-based and saying this is bad to bringing all on board in different different cultures have different ways of engaging with earth and that was good 
And we need to bring it that up. We need to bring that narrative up. So in my opinion, we are at a, not only a crisis that is facing humanity, we are also a crisis of communication and collective actions. And we need to address that in order to solve and in order to unite, you know, to solve the biggest uh, issue facing, uh, facing us and our future. Zaina, you are absolutely right. I mean, it's all we think about at Peace One Day. You know, let's inform people, but let's inspire them to lead to engagement so we can manifest impact. Because if we get too frightened, then how are we going to get up and, and, and have the kind of uh, the energy and the passion to make a difference if we don't think we can? So I totally hear what you're saying and very wise words. So what has humanity got to do to get through this crisis? And most importantly, Zaina, do you think we're capable? Is the human capable of turning this around? i i definitely think we are capable to turn this around i'm an optimist by nature i've also worked for 20 years of my life actually more 30 years of my life in war zones and like this is the abyss this is the darkness of humanity and i still so the best acts of humanity out of these hard circumstances and, and situations. So I'm a believer that we can make the impossible possible. I'm a believer in the possibilities of change. But we need to actually look, act and act immediately and understand what is, at, you know, what are the paths, uh, uh, what are the pathways for actions? Now, in my opinion, the media narrative has focused a lot on technology uh, and as the path to renewable energy, which is obviously the science and the scientists are saying yes indeed shifting to renewable energy and that is a lot of it brought about by technology is an important path to solving climate change but according to our partners one earth there are also other pathways that are more human-led solutions and one of them is the most important one which is protecting and preserving 50 percent of earth that is land water that entails biodiversity that entails rewilding that entails all the things of leaving earth alone 50 percent of it or coexisting in it without disturbing it and a lot of indigenous cultures in all over the world have knew how to do that um, and still know how to do that. And we need to learn from them on how to do that. How can we coexist with Earth in a way that gives her a break to breathe and to regenerate itself, right, herself? Now, this, the third pathway is regenerative agriculture. Again, these are human-led solutions. We can do this right now to shift to regenerative agriculture, to support farmers who are doing regenerative agriculture, to shift our mindset uh, in how we shop and how we buy our foods, how we plant our food, you know, that is possible. So these two in the other indicators besides renewable energy, protecting and preserving earth and shifting to regen uh, regenerative agriculture are things that we can do now. It takes will, it takes political will on behalf of all of us as individuals. It takes, frankly, money. Right now, as we speak, there are indigenous communities in Brazil fighting right, left, and center to protect the Amazonian land in, in Brazil. As same with Ecuador and the same with different countries. And what they need is money, frankly, to support that initiative, to support their fight to protect the land, not only from them, for all of us. And, you know, we are struggling to raise that money. I mean, this is about, again, the, the power of saying, this is urgent, we need to do that now, and we need to give them money right now so we can protect um these lands that is important for all of our humanity so it takes few acts but i mean i think there are things that we can all do in my simple life here i do my rewilding i do my regenerative agriculture i try my best to get uh, to renewable energy and there are things that we can do collectively as companies as countries as communities it is possible but we have to do it right now and we have to put our dollars or pounds or whatever currency we work in where where we uh, right now invest it right now in the future of our humanity really literally is in the future of our children it's going to get harder and harder and harder for every generation that passes without actions and so it's upon us today to act in order to make a difference absolutely incredible so you founded daughters for earth could you tell us about the initiative and why female-led climate action is so important well, you know, I started by saying I am a big believer in the power of women, the voices of women, the actions of women. And all what we need to do is 
find them, fund them, support them, celebrate them. And so when I got into the climate change, you know, I, I started my journey with working in the humanitarian world with women survivors of wars, as I mentioned, and you mentioned uh, as the founder of Women Forma International. When I got into the climate change, I really did not intend on it, uh, Jeremy, but I discovered that women are severely impacted by a uh, climate crisis in terms of displacement, in terms of food insecurities, in terms of uh, refugees and all of these things. And this is the narrative. That's about the only narrative we have, right? About women uh, impacts on climate crisis. What I came to discover is that women are doing unbelievable, exciting, powerful, important work to protect 50% of, of Earth and to shift to regenerative agriculture and renewable energy. Their voices are not heard. Their initiatives are not seen or not heard about or not funded. Women get two cents out of every environmental dollar that goes to, to support environmental issues. Two cents out of every dollar that goes out. And this is what really I, you know, it's like, okay, we need to, we need to do something about it. And thus came the creation of Daughters for Earth. It is to mobilize a hundred million dollars to support women-led climate solutions, to celebrate their stories, to, and to get, to give the science and the tips on how each one of us can lead to change in a very palatable and easy way. It is amazing. Uh, Jeremy, I have to tell you, I just came from visiting some of the women we support and fund and in Kenya. And I, you know, honestly, I came out saying, Oh my God, we do not need to empower women women are in their power protecting you know rewilding of um, amazing amount of uh, farms not only in africa but in england in switzerland of course in latin america in protecting wild animals i just came from seeing orphanages for elephants for penguins for we women led initiatives to actually support these uh, important protection of biodiversity uh, women are leading amazing projects with regenerative agriculture they're actually six 60 to 70 percent of small scale farmers in the world and thus their leaderships in regenerative agriculture is vitally important do we hear much about these issues or their initiatives in the mass media we don't do we need to know about it you bet you because they are leading some unbelievable solutions and would they need our support they need our funding and they need us to join them and that is the purpose of daughters for earth and it is not one person it is all a collective of all of us of all women come of all daughters rather and all their children coming together each one of us putting some of us putting ten dollars at a time some of us putting much more at a time uh, to put in that fund to support and celebrate uh women-led climate solutions it is it gives me hope it gives me energy it's uh, it makes me believe it ultimately makes me believe that we can be okay we just need to invest and put our actions uh, together and we need to walk the talk and not only talk about climate uh, change, we need to actually do something about it and support those who are doing it. Amazing. Incredible. So if people would like to support you, can you just tell me where they go and what you'd really like people to do? I would love for everyone to come to daughtersforearth.org. Um, we are about to launch an, a, a very exciting campaign in September. So please join us now so you can be the first to get the campaign and some of the, uh, the pricks that comes with it. It's called the hummingbird effect to give you uh, a, a highlight of it. You'll get a lot of knowledge and a lot of entertainment out of getting the science in a very simple and very engaging way that can be helpful for you and for your children for all the daughters around you um but please go visit us at, at www.daughtersforearth.com uh, .org i'm sorry and you know any contributions even if it's just ten dollars can make a huge difference this hundred million dollars we're mobilizing is really a collective of daughters from all over the world who are chiming in and whatever they can and so i really do invite you to come to join to be part of celebrating women-led climate solutions and to be part of the solutions yourself. Zaina Salbi, wow. <laughs> Listen, good luck with everything that you do. You're really leading the way. You're a complete inspiration to so many women and indeed men all over the world. Keep doing the wonderful work. Good luck, Zaina. Thank you, Jeremy. Thank you very much. Thank you.
Well, I see you. Bye bye. Bye bye. Incredible. Absolutely inspirational. Thank you, Zainab, for sharing your story and being part of Climate Action Live. <laughs>